A very good evening, aspirants. I have an announcement for you. See, prelims is coming nearby. Hardly one month is there. So, keeping this in mind, Shankar IAS Academy has launched an All India Free Prelims Mock Test. So, it is going to be conducted both online and in offline mode across 13 centers. The first mock test is going to be conducted on 15th May 2022, and there will be two other mock tests which will be conducted on. 22nd May and 29th May. So, interested aspirants make use of this. See, you have both the options. You can write both online and an offline mode. So, if you are able to come to the center and write the exam, well and good. You take the offline mode exam. If you are not able to come to the center and take the test, then you can always take the online mode test. I have given the link in the description. Go check that out. And with this announcement, now let us go into the Hindu daily news analysis for the date 20th April 2022. See displayed here are the list of articles that we are going to discuss today. Without any delay, now let's get into the discussion. See this data point here, it is a depiction of how coal shortages are affecting the power supply in our country. So let us see what is the situation and the reasons for coal shortage and its consequences while discussing the data in the data point. But before that, the syllabus relevant to the article is given here for your reference. Please go through it. As you know, coal is a fossil fuel and it is an exhaustible natural resources. What does it mean? It means that it is limited in nature. But among fossil fuels, it is the most abundantly found one. That is, it is available in large quantities. Here, remember that the coal producing areas of India are in Damodar Valley, which is the West Bengal Jharkhand region. Its important coal fields are Zaria, Raniganj, Bokaro, etc. Along with this, Godavari Valley, Mahanati, Son, and Varda Valleys also contain coal deposits. Now, the one we have to focus here is its applications. See, mainly coal is used in thermal power plants to produce electricity. It is also used as a fuel in various industries such as iron and steel industry. So, coal provides a substantial part of India's energy needs. And this is why India is highly dependent on coal for meeting its commercial energy requirements. See, I am going to give you a data here. You can use it in your main answer also. As of January 2022, India's coal-based power generation capacity stood at 2,3900 megawatts. And this is 51.6% of the total installed capacity, including the fossil and non-fossil fuels, and its share is highest among all. Now you can understand how much we rely on coal. So knowing this information, now think about this. If there is a shortage in coal, what will happen? First, it will affect the power supply. See, this is what is mentioned by the data point also. As per the data, in the recent months, coal stock, that is the inventory of coal, has fallen below the critical mark in more than 100 thermal power plants. See here, critical mark means the amount of available stock is 25% of the required stock. So, what does this mean? This means that in 100 thermal power plants, coal stock is less than 25% of what is required. See, this is depicted as orange dots in the representation here and the red dots represent the coal stock is less than 10% which is the scenario in around 50 thermal power plants. See, what is the implication here? It implies that less coal means less power generation in the thermal power plants and this ultimately means decline in power supply. Already this situation has led to power shortages in many states as you can see in this representation. See, the states include Andhra Pradesh, Uttarakhand, Maharashtra, Jharkhand, Rajasthan and many more states. See, as per the data, Andhra Pradesh has been witnessing 10% power shortage every day for the past week. See, we should not forget that summer has started and the demand for power supply will increase. This is clearly given in this graph. You can see that as summer approaches, India's power demand has increased by 5 gigawatts. It is even higher than the average demand for the past months. So, decline in the power supply is the first consequence of the shortage of coal. Second, less coal leads to less coal allotment to the thermal power plants that are located far from the coal mines. See, this again leads to decline in power production 
already plants are shutting down due to insufficient coal allotment for example amravati power plant in maharashtra shut down one of its units due to coal shortage resulting from insufficient allotment so this again leads to power production decline and thirdly it leads to less coal supply to non power sectors so the industries that depend on coal will get affected see some industries depend on coal as a fuel like the iron and steel industry cement industry etc some industries also need coal as a raw material for example coal is converted into coke to produce steel so here directly steel production is affected overall industries affected include iron and steel cement paper aluminum and fertilizer industries etc see so far we saw the consequences of the coal shortage now we'll see what are all the reasons that led to these coal shortages see the first reason for the coal shortage is the reduced coal imports see in the year 2021 india's coal imports reduced to a 9 year low this happened due to elevated prices of sea bond coal again sea bond coal became expensive in the year 2022 due to russia's invasion of ukraine imports also get affected by indonesia's coal export ban in january 2022 which was later lifted with some conditions see this less import led to the next reason which is more dependence on domestic production especially on coal india limited so to balance the high demand coal india prioritized coal allotment to power industries first leading to shortages in the other industries so this is the second reason now the third reason is disruption in the coal supply chain This is mainly caused by restrictions on coal transportations which were put in place to handle pollution. See in the year 2020 government mandated that coal transportation should be done by rail or conveyor belt or other environment friendly modes. But until railway or conveyor belt infrastructure is made available road transportation of coal will be allowed in tarpaulin covered trucks so this affected the transportation to some level and another fact is unavailability of rail freight capacity see this is due to delays in the construction of new rail lines see rail rakes which are the single railway carriage are the best mode to transport coal why see it is because a rake can carry 4000 tons of coal while a truck can typically deliver about 25 tons only this means carrying coal in trucks is an extremely inefficient costly and polluting option so using rakes is the efficient and less polluting mode but if the rail lines are fully constructed and made functional using rakes is not possible leading to difficulty in transportation and another disruption is heavy rain See heavy rain in many regions led to cut in the supply of coal. So these are the disruptions that are in the coal supply chain. The next reason is sudden surge in the demand of power which leads to increased demand for coal. See this is more pronounced in the summer months. Now the final reason is that lack of planning coordination between various ministries involved. See power ministry coal ministry and railways are integral part of the coal supply but lack of planning and coordination regarding allotment of coal proper loading and unloading of coal is affecting the coal supply so these are some of the major reasons behind the coal shortages now what is the response of the government and as usual they are saying there is no shortage of coal in the country only certain constraints are there in the coal supply So government's position is that the constraints are being rectified and the coal supply is increasing gradually. And with this government's response we came to the end of the discussion. We'll see what all we saw. We saw about the fossil fuel coal which is an exhaustible natural resource and it is found abundant. We saw the coal producing areas Damodar Valley, West Bengal Jharkhand region, Godavari Valley, Mahanadi, Son and Bardha valleys. and we saw the application of coal which is in the thermal power plants to produce electricity and as a fuel in many industries and as raw materials in some industries and we saw the consequences of shortage in coal the first one is it will affect the power supply and it will lead to power shortages 
See, Sama has started and the demand for power supply has increased tremendously. And the next consequence is less coal allotment to thermal power plants and less coal allotment to other industries other than the power industries. So, these are the consequences and we ended our discussion by seeing the reasons for the coal shortages. One is reduced coal imports. The other one is dependence on domestic production which led to shortages in other industries and third one is disruption in the coal supply chain and fourth one is sudden demand for power like I said summer months has started and finally lack of planning and coordination between various ministries. And with these points in mind now let us move on to the next article discussion. See this news article here. It talks about the foundation stone laid for the World Health Organization Global Center for Traditional Medicine that is GCTM. See this is laid by Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Tuesday at Jamnagar in Gujarat. Also this happened in the presence of Mauritius Prime Minister and World Health Organization's Director General. Note that this is the first of its kind. And uh, the GCTM will be a global outpost center for traditional medicine across the world. See, it is a recognition of India's contribution and potential in the traditional medicine field. According to Prime Minister, India takes this partnership as a huge responsibility for serving the entire humanity. So, in this context, let us learn about traditional medicine and then we will have a brief look at the World Health Organization Center for Traditional Medicine that is the GCTM. See, first of all, let us see what is traditional medicine. According to World Health Organization, traditional medicine, it is the total sum of the knowledge, skills and practices that are indigenous and also different cultures have used them over time. See, the major purpose of the traditional medicine is to maintain health and prevent, diagnose and treat physical and mental illness. Examples include acupuncture, yoga, ayurveda etc. So this is about the traditional medicine and with this basic understanding let us discuss about the World Health Organization Center that is the global center for traditional medicine. See it is a knowledge center for traditional medicine. As a part of WHO's overall traditional medicine strategy, it has a strategic focus on many things. Firstly, it has focus on evidence and learning. Secondly, on data and analytics. And then on sustainability and equity. And lastly, on innovation and technology. So, what is the purpose of this focus? See, these are to optimize the contribution of traditional medicine to the global health and the sustainable development. At the same time, it is to respect the local heritages, resources and rights of the people. So, the center is established as a knowledge center and to optimize the contribution of traditional medicine to the global health and sustainable development. See, now being established with the support of the government of India, the center reflects the WHO Director General's leadership vision. And what is that vision? It is the harnessing the potential of traditional medicine. See, traditional medicine would be a game changer for health when founded on evidence, innovation and sustainability. Thus, Prime Minister and the Government of India are supporting the establishment of WHO Global Centre for Traditional Medicine. As I said already, it is in Gujarat, India and it is in the spirit of Vasudeva Kudumbam that is the world is one family. So, these are all the basics about the centre and now let us see why it is needed. Firstly, around 80% of the world population is estimated to use traditional medicine such as the herbal medicines, acupuncture, yoga, indigenous therapies and others. Hence, they request to WHO for evidence and data to inform the policies, standards and regulatory frameworks. And all these requests are for safe, cost-effective and equitable use. And the second need is that Traditional medicine has been an integral resource for health for centuries in communities around the world. So, it is still a mainstay for some with inequities in access to conventional medicine. See, the socio-culture practice and the biodiversity heritages of the traditional medicine are invaluable resources. And why is it invaluable? Because it will help in evolving inclusive healthcare and diversifying the sustainable development. So, in simple words, second need is that everyone should get it. And thirdly, 
Traditional medicine is also a part of the growing trillion dollar global health, wellness, beauty and pharmaceutical industries. So obviously there is a need for a regulatory framework or there is a need for a knowledge center so that these industries can get information from the center. Thus, as a lead investor in the WHO Global Center for Traditional Medicine, India has committed an estimated 250 million US dollars. So, this is to support the center's establishment, infrastructure and operation. This includes 35 acres of land in Jamnagar, Gujarat for a new building. Also, it includes the premises in 2024 and interim office. And then India supports for the GCTM operational cost with the 10 year commitment. And with that we have come to the end of the discussion. We will see what all we saw. We saw the traditional medicine definition according to the World Health Organization which includes knowledge, skills and practices that are indigenous and are used by different cultures over different time. And what is the purpose of the traditional medicine? To maintain health, prevent, diagnose, treat physical and mental illness. Examples include acupuncture, yoga, Ayurveda. And we moved on to see about the Global Center for Traditional Medicine. See, it is a knowledge center for the traditional medicine. And it focuses on evidence and learning, data and analytics, sustainability and equity, and finally, innovation and technology. See, the center, it fulfills the vision of the WHO Director General. And what is that vision? It is the harnessing the potential of traditional medicine. And as far as India is concerned, it is committed because it is in the spirit of Vasudeva Kudumbam, which is world is one family. And finally, we ended our discussion by seeing the need for the center. See, 80% of world population is estimated to use traditional medicine. So, evidence and data to inform the policies, standards and regulatory framework are needed. And traditional medicine are an integral resource for health. So, to achieve inclusion and to diversify the sustainable development center is needed. And we saw that it is a part of many industries such as health, wellness, beauty and pharmaceuticals. So to regulate it and to get information from it, the center is needed. And with these points in mind, now let us move on to the next article discussion. Look at this article here. It talks about the health star rating system. See, the Food Safety and Standards Authority of India planned to adopt this system. The purpose is to help consumers reduce their intake of unhealthy foods. Also, the article talks about the critics of the recommendation of a study conducted by the IIM Ahmedabad. See, it's according to this recommendation, the Food Safety Standards Authority of India decided to adopt the Health Star Rating System. So, in this context, let us discuss about the FSSAI in prelims perspective. So, what is this FSSAI? See, Food Safety and Standards Authority of India is an autonomous statutory body. So, it was established under the Food Safety and Standards Act 2006. It is under the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, Government of India. And its headquarters is in New Delhi. And with this basic understanding, now let us see the functions. See, firstly, it needs to frame regulations to lay down the standards and guidelines for food safety. Then, it grants the FSSAI food safety license and certification for food business. And thirdly, it lays down procedure and guidelines for laboratories and food business. And then it provides suggestions to the government in framing the policies. And then it collects data regarding contaminants in food products, identification of emerging risks and introduction of a rapid alert system. And then it creates an information network across the country about food safety. And lastly, it promotes general awareness about food safety and food standards. So, these are all the functions of FSSAI. Now, just for your information, let us see the structure of this authority. See, FSSAI comprises of a chairperson and 22 members, out of which one third should be women. The chairperson of FSSAI is appointed by the central government and then the authority is assisted by scientific committees and panels in setting standards and the central advisory committee. So, FSSAI is coordinating with the enforcement agencies. But the primary responsibility for enforcement is largely with the state food safety commissioners. So, here take a look at this image to know about the structure of FSSAI. Chairperson. 22 members, 
scientific committee central advisory committee scientific panel state level steering committee district level advisory committees and with this we have come to the end we saw about the food safety and standards authority of india it is an autonomous statutory body established under food safety and standards act 2006 it is under the ministry of health and family welfare headquarters is in new delhi so what are all the functions it frames regulations to lay down standards and guidelines for food safety it grants food safety license and certification it lays down procedure and guidelines for laboratories suggestions to government in framing the policies it collects data regarding contaminants risk and introduces a rapid alert system it creates an information network about food safety it promotes general awareness about food safety and finally we ended our discussion by seeing the structure of the authority which comprises of a chairperson and 22 members chairperson is appointed by the central government see the authority it coordinates with the enforcement agencies but the primary responsibility for enforcement is with the state food safety commissioners and with these points in mind now let us move on to the next article discussion see this news article here it talks about the forecast for india's gdp growth by imf you all know what is imf right it is international monetary fund see imf on tuesday has cut its forecast for india's gdp growth it has cut the india's gdp growth in the current fiscal year to 8.2 percentage see this is a 0.8 percentage reduction from january see the reason cited was the economic impact of the russia ukraine war see the global impacts of russia's invasion of ukraine are seen through commodity price increases direct impacts on countries with trade links with the russia or ukraine and then it is seen via disruptions to cross border production networks for example neon gas production and input for silicon chips is concentrated in russia and ukraine so citing these reasons the imf has cut its forecast to 8.2 percentage for india's gdp growth So this is the crux of the article given here in this context let us discuss about the international monetary fund that is the imf in prelims perspective see the international monetary fund or the imf works for the achievement of sustainable growth and prosperity for all of its 190 member countries so from this we know there are 190 member countries and how does the imf achieve this IMF achieves this by supporting economic policies that promote financial stability and monetary cooperation. See these are essential to increase the productivity, job creation and economic well-being. The IMF is governed by the member countries and it is accountable to its member countries, okay? Now let us have a brief look at the history behind the establishment of IMF. See IMF was established in the year 1944 in the Bretton Woods Conference. This is in the aftermath of Great Depression of 1930s and after the Second World War. 44 founding member countries sought to build a framework for the international economic cooperation. Today, its membership embraces 190 countries with staff drawn from 150 nations. See, like I said, the IMF is governed by the member countries and it is accountable to member countries. so it means it is governed by and it is accountable to 190 member countries that make the imf an organization which has a near global membership now with this basic understanding we'll see what does the imf do see the imf has three critical missions first one is furthering the international monetary cooperation second one is encouraging the expansion of trade and economic growth and third one is discouraging policies that would harm the prosperity see to fulfill these missions imf member countries work collaboratively with each other and with other international bodies having seen the missions now we'll see how does the imf work see firstly imf gives policy advice here the imf monitors economic and financial developments and it advises the countries Secondly the IMF provides financial assistance that is loans and other financial aid to member countries especially for countries experiencing actual or potential balance of payments problems and thirdly IMF provides for capacity development this is by providing technical assistance and training to help governments to implement sound economic policies 
See, as a part of its World Economic and Financial Surveys, the IMF publishes flagship reports on multilateral surveillance twice a year. And what are they? They are the World Economic Outlook, Global Financial Stability Report, and the Fiscal Monitor. And with this, we have come to the end of the discussion. We'll have a quick recap. See, we saw that IMF works to achieve sustainable growth and prosperity for all of its 190 member countries. and it achieves this by supporting economic policies that promote financial stability and monetary cooperation so here i'll tell you the keywords you have to remember only the keywords achievement of sustainable growth prosperity for all and promotion of financial stability and monetary cooperation see these four keywords are very important and after that we saw about the history behind the establishment of imf it was established in the year 1944 in the bretton wood conference and we saw that it is governed by and it is accountable to 190 member countries which makes it a near global membership organization we saw three critical missions of imf what are they they are furthering the international monetary cooperation encouraging the expansion of trade and economic growth and discouraging policies that harm the prosperity and how does the imf work it gives policy advice it provides financial assistance it provides for capacity development and it publishes flagship reports on multilateral surveillance and what are all the reports that are published by the IMF world economic outlook weo global financial stability report gfsr fiscal monitor fm with these points in mind now let us move on to the next part of our discussion that is the practice prelims question discussion today we have four prelims questions one of them is a previous year question that was asked in the year 2019 and one of them is a quiz question for you Firstly let us take the previous year question consider the following statements coal sector was nationalized by the government of india under indira gandhi statement 2 now coal blocks are allocated on lottery basis statement 3 till recently india imported coal to meet the shortages of domestic supply but now india is self sufficient in coal production see this is a fairly tough question you may not know anything about statement 1 and statement 2 but still you can arrive at the correct answer through the elimination method try to remember our discussion today about the coal shortages we saw that still there are coal shortages in the country and we saw about the consequences of it also so from today's discussion itself we can say that india is not yet self sufficient in coal production so in the year 2019 it definitely would not have been a self sufficient country in the coal production so the statement 3 is incorrect we found that the statement 3 is incorrect now take a look at the options option b option c and option d all the three options have three as the answer so we can safely eliminate these three options so obviously option a is the right answer but we'll also discuss about the statement 1 and statement 2 see statement 1 is correct because the nationalization was done in two phases the first with the coking coal mines in 1971 to 1972 and then with the non coking coal mines in 1973 and who was pm at that time it was indira gandhi who was the prime minister of the country from 1971 to 73 now coming to the second statement statement 2 was incorrect because the coal blocks are allotted through auctions and not on a lottery basis so the correct option here is option a one only moving on to the next question with reference to traditional medicines consider the following statements acupuncture is an example of traditional medicine statement 2 who global center for traditional medicine purpose is to respect local heritages resources and rights see here the statement 1 it is correct we saw in our discussion itself that acupuncture is an example of traditional medicine and what are the other examples ayurveda unani siddha naturopathy yoga etc now coming to the second statement this also we saw in our discussion c one of the purpose for the establishment of global center for traditional medicine is to respect the local heritages resources and rights then the other purpose is to optimize the traditional medicines contribution to global health and sustainable development so we found that statement 1 and statement 2 are correct so the correct option here is option c both 1 and 2 Now this third question it is a quiz question for you. 
with reference to food safety and standards authority of india consider the following statements it is a statutory body it lays down standards and guidelines for food safety it creates an information network for food safety which of the following statements given above is or are correct one only one and three only one and two only and all the above recall our discussion attempt this question and post your answer in the comment section now the final question with reference to international monetary fund consider the following statements imf works to achieve sustainable development and prosperity for all statement 2 india is not a member of imf see the first statement here it is a little bit confusing right we saw the statement in our discussion itself but then if you are a person who is looking at the statement for the first time without the background of the imf what you will think IMF is the International Monetary Fund so it is a financial institution right then how come it works for achievement of sustainable development and prosperity for all here is where you have to be very careful this case is true right we saw in our discussion it works to achieve sustainable development and prosperity for all of its member countries so here statement 1 is correct india is not a member of imf this statement is incorrect because India became a member of IMF in the year 1945. So here the correct answer is option A one only. See aspirants have given a mains question for you. So if you are interested, write it and post it in the comment section. If you have any queries related to the articles, post that also in the comment section. And don't forget to attempt the quiz question. And with this we have come to the end. If you find the video useful, like, share, and comment. and do subscribe to shankara as academy's youtube channel for further updates thank you